Hello and welcome back. In this video, we're going to deep dive a little bit into the Python interpreter. What is the Python interpreter and how does it work under the hood? Some people can argue that this is more of an advanced topic, but I don't really think so because we're going to be covering it at a very basic level. Uh, it's very useful for you to understand how the Python interpreter works because this is something that you will be subjected to when you're installing Python or when you are using an IDE, you're always going to come across the Python interpreter. So it's important for you to understand what is the Python interpreter and how does Python work under the hood. Specifically, we're going to cover these topics. Number one, we will discuss how any program runs on your computer. You can't really understand the Python interpreter if you don't understand how does your computer run any program? So we're going to talk about this first. After that, we will talk about specifically how Python runs under the hood, how Python runs your code. We're going to take the Hello World program as an example, and I'll walk you through what happens from the moment you run your program until you get the Hello World string printed on the screen. And then finally, I'm going to show you some Python examples to just help you further understand what's really happening under the hood. All right, so let's get started. So how does your computer run any program? At the most basic level, there are two components that are relevant. Your processor, you know, the CPU, something like Intel or ARM or AMD, your CPU, your processor, and your memory. The code that the processor runs is going to be stored in the memory as instructions. These instructions will be just a bunch of ones and zeros. And by the way, ones and zeros are nothing but voltages on transistors. This doesn't matter as much, but you know, I used to be an electrical engineer, so I just had to say that. Okay, so you have instructions, you have a bunch of ones and zeros that are stored in the memory, and you also have data, okay? So the memory stores instructions and data. Now it's worth mentioning that these instructions are specific to the processor we're dealing with. Each processor will have its own set of instructions that it can understand. We call this the instruction set architecture. For example, the list of instructions that an Intel processor can understand is different from the list of instructions that something like the ARM processor will understand. Each processor will have its own set of instructions that it can understand. So now the job of the processor is very simple. The processor does basically one thing. It fetches an instruction from the memory, understands what this instruction means, and then go ahead and execute this instruction. For example, the processor that we have here reads the first instruction from the memory. Let's say this instruction is basically just add two numbers together. So the processor will execute this instruction by adding these two numbers. And then the processor will go ahead and fetch the second instruction. And let's say the second instruction is save the result somewhere in the memory. So the processor is going to execute this instruction and save the result somewhere in the memory, in the data section. And this is simply how any program runs. This is what your processor is doing all the time, fetching instructions, executing them, fetching instructions, executing them. But again, remember that these instructions are specific to the processor we're dealing with. This point is going to be crucial in a little bit, so remember that. We call these set of instructions that are stored in the memory, we call them machine code. So from now on, if you hear the word machine code, you know that it's just a bunch of ones and zeros that represent instructions that the processor can understand, okay? Now, with this understanding, when you're writing source code, whether it's Python or Java or C++ or whatever, this source code is nothing but some text file stored in your hard disk. The processor doesn't really understand this text file. You can understand the text file. If I read your code, I will understand what you want the processor to do, but you don't feed the source code to the processor directly because the processor only understands machine code. So there has to be a translator that translates the source code of your language to the machine code that the processor can understand. And that is what a compiler is. A compiler 
is another piece of software that basically reads your source code in your language and then translates this source code into a machine code for a specific platform, for a specific processor and a specific operating system. So the input of a compiler is the source code of a particular programming language and the output is always going to be what we call a binary. And a binary is a set of ones and zeros representing the instruction set that the processor can understand, okay? Very straightforward. And then when you double click, let's say you are on a Windows operating system. When you double click on a file, on a binary file, what's gonna happen is that the operating system is going to load this binary, this binary file into the memory and then instructs the processor to start fetching and executing the instructions that are translated from the source code that you wrote. This is the flow of what happens if you're writing your code in C, C++, or Go. However, in Python, it's a little different. Let's see why. Let's say we have a hello world program stored in a file called hello.py. So if you want to run this program on your terminal, what you would do is you would say Python or Python 3, and then the name of the file, which is hello py and let's say it's a very simple hello world program so your source code file basically just has print hello world and we also have our memory okay let's see what happens here when you run the program first of all when you say python hello.py this python is the python interpreter so this is the python interpreter and the python interpreter is already a binary. The Python interpreter is the program that you're actually running here, which means that the machine code that is going to be stored in the memory is going to be the instructions that represent the Python interpreter, not the instructions that represents your hello world source code. This is very important to understand. So the Python interpreter will be stored in the memory as, like I said, a bunch of instructions, a bunch of ones and zeros that the processor can understand. But conceptually, you can think of the Python interpreter as two components. The first component is called the compiler, and the second component is called the Python virtual machine. Now, how does your computer eventually run your source code, though, if the machine instructions in the memory is only the machine instructions that represent the Python interpreter. Well, if you look at the command that you're running, you're passing in hello.py, the name of the file, as an argument to this Python interpreter. So what's gonna happen is the compiler is going to read this source code and does what every other compiler does. It is going to translate your source code into something that is not the machine code. It will translate it into an intermediate language, intermediate code that we call the byte code. Now, the byte code is not something that the processor can understand. It's an intermediate code that is not targeting a specific processor. It is actually targeting the Python virtual machine. So the Python virtual machine is the component that can understand bytecodes. And maybe now you understand why we call it the Python virtual machine in the first place. Because if you look at the Python virtual machine, it's basically doing the same job as the hardware processor. The Python virtual machine is going to read the bytecode, the instructions of the bytecode, and execute it on the hardware. So again, to summarize, the compiler is the component in your Python interpreter that treats the source code that you write and translates the source code into a binary. So the bytecode is actually a binary as well. But this binary, these ones and zeros, are not ones and zeros that your processor can understand. So the processor cannot really execute the instructions of the bytecode directly. But what can understand the bytecode is the Python virtual machine, which is another component in the Python interpreter. The Python virtual machine is going to read the bytecode and it is going to be the component that executes this bytecode on your hardware. So this is how the Python interpreter works and how Python works under the hood.
It's not just Python, also Java works this way. But one thing that is important to mention here as well is Python is a programming language. So it's basically a specification of what the language looks like. What we're talking about here is a specific implementation of the language that we call C Python. But it's basically the implementation that is widely used when you install Python from python.org. That's the official installation you basically get this implementation. So it's safe to assume that this is how Python works on your own machine as well. Now let's take some Python examples to try to further understanding of these concepts. Okay, so let's say we have a simple hello world program stored in a file called hello.py. So if we want to run this program, we just say Python 3 hello.py. Like I said before, Python 3 is the Python interpreter and then hello.py is the file that represents our source code. So hello world is printed out on the screen. Nothing fancy here, we expected that. Now, what if you want to just compile hello.py? You want to look at the bytecode. You don't wanna run the program, you just wanna compile the program. You wanna look at the bytecode that is the result of the compilation stage. If you want to do this, you can say Python 3, dash m and then pi underscore compile and then the name of the file that you want to compile. So in our case it's hello.py. What's going to happen here is that the compiler of the Python interpreter is going to read hello.py and then compiles hello.py into bytecode and it's going to store this bytecode in a folder called pycache. So if we list all the files under pycache we'll see that we have this file called hello.cpython.pyc. The PYC extension in Python, or in C Python specifically, means that this is bytecode. If you want to check the content of this file, you can cat this file. And as you can see here, this is a bunch of gibberish. This is a binary file, which means it's, it's storing ones and zeros. And that's why it doesn't really show on the screen. You can see uh, some stuff, you can see hello world, because you'd imagine hello world will be somewhere in, in, in the translated bytecode. But most of the file is basically just ones and zeros that you can't even output on the screen. This is the bytecode, and the Python virtual machine can understand this. If you give this to the Python virtual machine, the Python virtual machine will translate this into actual instructions that run on your processor. And by the way, the command cat works if you are on a Linux or a Mac machines. If you are on a Windows machine, you can use the command type. It's pretty much gonna do the same thing. Now, what if you wanna look at a human readable version of this bytecode? Because as you can see, the bytecode in its binary format, you can't look at it and get anything valuable from it. The Python virtual machine can understand it, but humans can't really read it. So if you want to get a human readable version of this bytecode, what you could do is you can say Python 3 and then dash M and then DIS, which stands for disassemble, and then the name of the file, which is hello.py. So in this case, if we press enter, as you can see, we get a bunch of instructions. Each instruction of these instructions is a bytecode instruction that the Python virtual machine can understand and can execute on your hardware. So these commands are, to be quite frank with you, you're probably never gonna need to use these commands at all during your career. But if you're a nerd like me and you like to understand how things work under the hood, then you can always play around with these things and it will give you a very good understanding of how Python works. All right, that's it for this video. I hope this was useful and I'll see you in the next video.